Hey everyone and welcome to another Heroes and Bosses video. This time I'm going to be painting the Wendigo from the game Village Attacks, a Kickstarter game from Grimlord Games. As you can see I've cut the miniature from the base and I'm going to attach it to a piece of cork to paint it. This is completely optional and near the end of the video I'll explain how you can make a really cool base without having to remove the miniature. The base is quite elaborate so I felt it required a separate video and I'll post links to that in the description below. Now to prime this miniature I'm using the same technique I use for most of my painting videos, first priming the miniature from below with black and then spraying it with light grey from above at a 45 degree angle. The hardest place to reach with a brush on the Wendigo is between the ribs and I'm going to be painting this with a roughly 1 to 1 mix of Screamer Pink and Cardic Flesh. The Wendigo has what looks like muscle or just torn skin all around the rib area so I just wanted to give that a dark pink flesh color. If you're not familiar with what a Wendigo is, it's an evil spirit from native North American folklore. It's said to possess humans and give them feelings of insatiable greed and cause them to commit murder. I also read something about a psychological condition from urban legends called Wendigo Psychosis where a person suddenly develops an intense craving for human flesh. Now that all the internal flesh is painted, I'm moving on to the skin. For this I'll be using Rakarth Flesh and Battle Dress Green. I'm using these two paints to create three separate skin colors. The first is going to be a slightly greenish Rakarth Flesh. I'm just mixing in a bit of the Battle Dress Green into the Rakarth Flesh until it takes on a slightly greenish hue, which worked out to be about two parts Rakarth to one part Battle Dress. The darkest color is just going to be pure battle dress green and the third color will be something in the middle, about two parts battle dress green to one part Rakarth flesh. So you can see here that the two color prime has created areas of light and dark on the miniature and this is going to be our guide for painting the skin. I'm starting off by painting all of the dark areas with a pure battle dress green. I'm not concerned with wet blending right now, that can always be done later, even after your first layer of paint is dried. In fact I always let the first coat dry, otherwise your paint job can look patchy if you try to wet blend the first layer of color. Now I should say that the two color prime is not necessary, nor is the three different skin tones. I'm doing this to create some deep shadowed areas and color variation. But if your goal is just to get this on the table and start gaming, just choose one skin tone and use that on the entire mini. So now I'm switching to the brightest skin tone and I'm using this on all the bright areas of the skin. I'm using this to paint down until it's touching or almost touching the darkest skin tone and then I'm going to switch to the middle skin tone. You can see here that I'm using the middle color and I'm painting in between the light and the dark and some of it is overlapping the two colors. From here there's a couple things you can do. You can not bother trying to blend right now and let everything dry. Once it's dry you can use very thin down paint to blend the transitions. So to do this I would take the middle tone and brush upward from the darkest skin tone into the middle tone. After that I would take the lightest skin tone and brush upward from the middle tone into the lightest. You always brush towards whichever color is on your brush at the time. Alternatively you can wet blend where the colors meet. Just mix the colors together right where they meet on the mini. Regardless the transitions don't have to be flawless because they get blurred together later with a wash. I guess there is a third option, if you're only using one skin tone, just ignore everything I just said. The blending is quite easy once you get the hang of it and if you're using thinned paints, both half water half paint, you can't really create any unfixable mistakes. The most time consuming part is done so it's time to get the rest of the base colors on. I'm first going to paint the eye sockets with the same flesh tone that I used for under the ribs. I've painted the entire face with a dark skin tone and I'm using that to touch up all the mistakes I'm making right here. For all the ribs I'm using Screaming Skull. On the back it looks like the spine is also exposed so I'm making sure to cover that too. I'm painting the hair with Skaven Blight Dinge. The hair is tangled around antlers and what looks like either torn fabric or moss hanging from them. I couldn't tell which would be the easiest to paint first so I went with the hair. So 
So here's how the Wendigo is looking so far. Next up is the antlers. For this, I'm going back to the screaming skull that I used on the ribs. For the strips of cloth hanging from the antlers, I'm using Steel Legion Drab. There's usually a few key areas that I like to draw attention to on a mini, and for this one, it's going to be the hands and the face. The character art shows this miniature to have very human looking hands, which kind of reminds you that this creature used to be a human. I'm starting off by covering the hands from the wrists down with cardic flesh. Now I want the skin to transition from the ghastly green to the pinkish flesh, so now I'm using some watered down iridian flesh, and I'm painting from the hand to about halfway up the forearm with this. At the top where I want the iridian flesh to blend into the rakarth flesh, I'm going to use a damp brush to feather the iridian flesh upward to thin it out. And that's what you can see me doing here, just thinning out the paint near the top. Once it dries you should see that they blend in pretty well with each other. Now just to reduce the harsh line between the cardic flesh and the iridian flesh, I'm mixing a midway tone using about half of each. And you can see this is really watery at a glaze consistency. I'm brushing thin layers of this between the wrist and the forearm. Next I'm going to paint the knives that the Wendigo is holding. First I'm painting the handles using Rhinox Hide. For the knife blades I'm going to be using Pig Iron from P3. Pig iron is a very gritty looking metallic, so I figure if this creature lives in the woods or a swamp, it's not going to have the best tools. The last thing I want to do is give the mouth a different color. It's hard to tell if the Wendigo has a lot of tiny teeth, or if it just has shriveled lips that are wrapped around the teeth. Both are terrifying, but I'm going with shriveled lips, and I'm painting the mouth with Iridian flesh. Now that all the base colors are on, I'm switching to washes. These are the four colors I'll be using, and I'm starting off by covering the antlers and the cloth hanging from them with Agrax Earthshade. I'm not waiting for any of the washes to dry before I switch to the next. This way I can avoid tide marks on the mini. So now I've switched to Null Oil, and I'm using this on the hair. I'm also using null oil on the blades and the handles of the four knives. For all of the skin except for the hands, I'm using Athonian Camo Shade. Now I'm waiting till the end to do the forearms because I want to quickly switch to Reikland Flesh Shade to do the rest of the hand. I'm making sure that my washes meet up and it's okay if they mix a little. You just don't want the camo shade to dry before you put on the flesh shade. It's not a big deal if this does happen, you just might end up with some small tide marks. I'm also using the flesh shade and all the pink innards that are showing through the ribs. Now I'm going to let all that dry before starting a few minor highlights and some finishing touches. 
So the first thing I'm doing is touching up the ribs with Screaming Skull where they were hit with the Reichland Flesh Shade. I'm also using Screaming Skull to lightly dry brush the tops of the antlers. I'm using a small flat brush for this and I'm trying not to hit the hair and the cloth. For the cloth, I'm doing a reapplication of the Steel Legion drab and painting everything except the recesses. Next I'm highlighting the hair. I'm starting off with Storm Vermin Fur and I'm painting the top surface of all the hair, being careful to avoid the grooves in between the hairs. And last for the hair, I'm using some very thin down Celestra Grey and only putting on a small amount of my brush at once. I'm using this to put a thin coat of paint on the top one-third of the hair. Next I'm doing the eyes, and first I'm painting both eyes with white scar. Next I'm using Cassandora Yellow Wash and completely covering both eyes with it. I'm dabbing away the wash from the front of the eyes with a damp brush just to make it stand out a bit better. For the mouth, I'm just doing a reapplication of the Iridian Flesh. I want these knives to look even grittier, so I'm putting a layer of Typhus Corrosion on the blades everywhere except the edge. Then I'm using Pig Iron on the edge, although you could use something brighter for a more pronounced effect. The last bit of highlighting is going to be for the face and the hands. As I said earlier, these are the areas I want to stand out the most. So first, I'm reapplying Battle Dress Green to the forehead, the chin, the nose, and all around the eye sockets. Then I'm creating a brighter highlight using a 2 to 1 mix of Battle Dress Green and Rakarth Flesh. I'm putting one layer of this where there should be eyebrows on a person, plus on the ridges all around the eyes. I'm also putting a small amount on the nose and the chin. The final highlight will be on the hands. I'm going back to the cardic flesh and I'm highlighting the tops of all the fingers with this. For the last finishing touch for this miniature, I've mixed Blood for the Blood God with an equal amount of water, and I'm using this as a glaze first for the inside of the lower eye sockets, and then almost as a wash for the exposed guts. Once I've finished with Blood for the Blood God, I'm then spraying the entire miniature with Tester's Dull Coat. In my last video I created a custom swamp base for the Wendigo, but if you decided not to detach your Wendigo, here's a way you can create a nearly identical base but without the water effects. Get some small bits of gravel and sticks from outside. Cover the Wendigo's base with an earth texture like Vallejo Dark Earth or Sterling Mud, and just put the sticks and gravel into it all around the Wendigo. That's pretty much exactly what I would have done as an alternative to the swamp theme on this base. So now that I have the Wendigo attached, I'm just going to add a small amount of sterling mud to blend the feet and daggers into the ground, because right now there are small gaps. I'm using an old brush that's frayed and only good for glue and mud. You can see here that I'm just spreading it out around the daggers and the feet so it looks like they're actually touching the ground.
Now the feet and legs look too clean, so I mixed a ton of water with some Dryad Bark paint. That's the same color I used for the ground, and I'm splashing it randomly onto the feet and the lower legs. And there you have it, the Wendigo from Village Attacks by Grimlord Games. A special thank you to all my patrons for supporting these videos. Your continued support is very much appreciated. As I said before, I'll post a link for the custom swamp base in case that's something you're interested in. If you want to join our Patreon community and help decide which miniatures get painted next and to show off your own miniatures, come check out Heroes and Bosses on Patreon. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching.